Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. I have the pleasure of, uh, of introducing our final speaker before the sandwich break, uh, and that is uh, Lizzie Pullman. Lizzie is uh, from the Dutch Authority for Digital Infrastructure, and she is an inspector in the uh, EIDAS realm. Uh, Lizzie works, uh, is very involved in quantum research, and uh, also looking at the positive and negative impacts that uh, quantum technology can have on society. Uh, in addition to, uh, to her work in this space, and I found this kind of really interesting, she has uh, interests that lie in a, uh, in a variety of different places, including uh, archaeology, Arabic culture, crisis management, and IT security, which mm -hmm. is a very uh, interesting combination. So Lizzie, Thank welcome. You. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Hello. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Very appreciated. So welcome, audience online. My name is uh, Lizzie Bullman, and thank you for uh, giving a short uh, background. Um, yeah, I'm working for the Dutch Authority for Digital Infrastructure in the function of IEDAS inspector. And I'm in this role since three and a half years, and alongside the responsibilities of being an inspector, I'm running the quantum program for the authority. And um, so uh, this is uh, the agenda for today. It's uh, threefold. It's about the IEDAS realm and the trust service uh, providers involved. And after that, I will making a bridge to the quantum implications and the quantum threat regarding the IEDAS regulation and how to um, envision that as an inspector and lastly i'm going through several activities of the authority itself and um, what we see to um, what's needed to be handled during this uh, program so first i will start with a little overview on uh, the history of the dutch authority and uh, it has been established quite a while ago in uh, 1929. Um, so it holds a long history and it was known during that time um, under the lovely name of Radio Controle Dienst van het Staatsbedrijf der PTT. <laughs> and recently, at the start of this year in January 2023, uh, it knew a uh, name change again. Uh, maybe it sounds familiar. Te um, Agentschap Telecom or the Radio Communications Agency. It was changed to um, the Dutch Authority for Digital Infrastructure. And that this was due to the changing IT landscape and the changing or the broadening of the working fields of the agency itself. And during this presentation, I refer to uh, the agency or the authority because, um, in my knowledge, there is not a nice English abbreviation of the authority. In, in Dutch, we hold the RDI, Rijksinspectie voor Digitale Infrastructuur, but from the top of my head, there is no nice English abbreviation. So therefore, uh, I will refer to the authority. So, um, on mission statement, uh, keeping the Netherlands secure and, and safe, high and dry, digitally wise. So, um, quantum is one of those areas involved with the working field of uh, the Dutch authority. There are uh, a lot of activities involved, so that means a lot of uh, supervision activities in a wide array of sectors. We are active in the field of IoT. We are running our own IoT lab within the authority. Um, we are busy with 5 and 6G, radio frequency, Weebon, NIS, CSA, of course, uh, 
artificial intelligence. IEDAS, AEDA, which is also part of the IEDAS regulation, actually, and quantum. Um, that is only a small set of our activities. Um, I need to say about quantum, we are um, running several activities since several years, but we are not uh, the authority on quantum itself or uh, post-quantum cryptography. So we do not say um, to our uh, entities, you need to implement uh, a protocol A or B. Or we don't provide them with a certain timeline. Our goal is to um, to establish communication about quantum. And we are very curious how the trust service provider um, regards the quantum threat and how it's embedded in, for example, their, their risk management approach. So that's um, the Dutch authority in a nutshell. Um, this visual representation was, oh, um, I see that the picture is not that sharp. However, um, this visual representation was established also at the start of this year with, uh, with our name change. It um, portrays all different working fields and um, give a sense of our core values within uh, the authority. Um, so our mission statement is to um, stand and adhere for a safely connected Netherlands. And that uh, is achieved through uh, our um, core values, such as our social responsibility towards um, the Dutch citizens. Um, we are active in the Netherlands. We are based in Amersfoort and, and Groningen, but also we hold an office in the Caribbean uh, Netherlands on, uh, on Bonaire. So, um, this is our holy grail. We are working with the IEDAS uh, regulation and I'm working with several IEDAS inspectors um, and we're working on a daily basis to um, get a grip on the IEDAS regulation together with our uh, um, entities who are under su supervision. So the IEDAS regulation uh, was once set up in 2014 in order to um, uphold a harmonized digital infrastructure across the member states of the Euro European Community. It was, um, yeah, it was launched in, in, in 2014 and applies from 2016. And between those years, uh, the Dutch Authority was appointed as the supervisory body of the Netherlands. So um, we are one of the supervisory bodies across the member states and uh, within the group of supervisory bodies, we try to adhere a, a harmonized approach. So we stand for uh, interoperability, uh, an harmonized way of, um, of um, supervisory activities. And um, it's all about transparency. And to keep um, the European uh, community safe, secure, and to protect people's privacy as well. So um, there are several international fora. Um, one is FESA and one is ACATS. And ACATS is the working group of ENISA. And uh, the AIDAS regulation exists um, uh, in several parts um, and chapter three um, embodies the trust services. So I will dive deeper into that. So chapter three is all about uh, the different trust uh, services that are um, in the field. So it's about electronic signatures, electronic seals, electronic timestamps, 
electronic register, delivery services, and website authentication. And it makes a division between qualified and non-qualified uh, providers. So that makes um, a different approach for us as the supervisory body uh, itself. Um, we hold direct uh, supervision activities on the qualified providers and indirect uh, supervision of activities on the non-qualified providers. And the qualified providers are enlisted on the uh, trust service list of the European Commission. Nowadays, there are, uh, for the Netherlands, uh, nine trust uh, service parties enlisted. Uh, several weeks ago, there was a new party enlisted. And uh, so now it is uh, a total of, uh, of nine parties. And the trust service providers who are enlisted uh, may use the AU trust service mark. So when you browse to the trust service providers and you uh, scroll through their website, you can see probably and, and mostly, you can see the U AU trust mark uh, stamp. So the near future, what will it bring? Um, yeah, nowadays we are um, involved with with new um, dynamics, AEDAS 2, NIS 2, or the NIS 2 directive. And what will it bring? Um, yeah, several of my colleagues can talk for hours about uh, these subjects. I will not dive into that because, um, yeah, it's uh, that's for a different place, different time. However, it's means a different approach for us as a, a supervisory body. Processes will largely stay the same. However, we will see in the near future new trust service providers and new trust services. Um, so we need to take steps, what to do. So there are several new trust services enlisted in the revised AEDAS 2, uh, which is not already uh, published, but is. Um, but you can take a look at the European Commission website and you can take a look at the draft. Um, one of the new trust services um, will be uh, the AU wallet. Um, so within the authority agency, we are thinking about yeah, what to do. Um, what is your role as an inspector towards those new uh, trust services? Um, so the wallet is one thing. And besides that, we also see uh, some developments uh, regarding blockchain. So we're thinking about that and how to implement a uh, a good and stable supervisionary um, process <coughs> surrounding that. What's going on in the field? So while making a bridge to the quantum threat, um, the quantum program was set up uh, several years ago, maybe two or three years ago, because we saw different perspective in our field regarding quantum. So um, I already heard also in yesterday's presentation several keywords which are important for us as well and which are embedded in our strategy, like um, building quantum awareness, um, building a kind of communication with not only internally, but also with our stakeholders and building a platform, a sharing knowledge. So that are items we want to um, give to our entities who are on their supervision and staying in contact with each other on how to confront the, the quantum threat uh, now and in the near future. Um, so we have seen that there are a lot of implications. Um, the quantum computer um, is in development. There are a lot of uh, 
um, requirements needed to have a stable, workable quantum computer. So it will take a while before this uh, computer is in use. So our estimation uh, is uh, 2030 plus. And this is the estimation also um, adhered uh, by uh, different agencies in the Netherlands and different uh, ministries. So we are following that. Um, so the threat timeline, this is a model uh, we are using in our own strategy. Uh, it gives you help to strengthen your uh, risk uh, assessment regarding the quantum threat. And we are also sharing this um, so-called uh, Mosca's inequality, which has been set up several years ago, and it's, it's very good. We also um, give this model to our um, entities who are uh, under uh, supervision. So it gives um, the organization um, a very good uh, grip on their own situation, what to do next, what to do now, what to do next. And the implications for current cryptography, um, the backbone of uh, the trust service parties is um, a strong uh, current cryptography in use. Um, we have seen asymmetric uh, cryptography will be, will be broken within the upcoming years. Um, maybe in 2026 already, we just heard. Um, more or less, the estimation is 2030, 2035. Uh, symmetric uh, cryptography will, will more or less hold its ground. So the IEDAS regulation, um, what does it mean for the TSP, for the Trust Service Party? Um, the current uh, AEDAS uh, regulation um, holds a broad view. Um, it says, keep your current processes up to date, keep uh, best practices in place, and uh, implement uh, appropriate technical and organizational measures in order to confront um, current risks. Current, yeah. So, quantum. Um, the AEDAS regulation, the revision, implements or names um, cryptographic algorithms. However, it doesn't go in detail. So, this gives um, us, the inspector, um, some tools to speak with our TSP. So what about crypto, uh, cryptographic algorithms? Which one are in use? Without saying you have to use Falcon, you have to use no, uh, other kinds of algorithms who are now in the race of NIST. Further, we work with the Etsy standardization, and it also says something about uh, implementing strong crypto, uh, crypto and security controls. However, it doesn't go in detail. This is not mandatory, actually, to implement Etsy standardization. Um, it's important uh, for the uh, trust service party to, to implement uh, a kind of standardization, but we don't say that Etsy is the mandatory form of it. Furthermore, we share ENISA guidelines with our trust service parties, and we use the ENISA guidelines ourselves. We are um, working closely together with ENISA, which is a knowledge center across um, Europe and which is based in, in Greece. So the NIST uh, race, what's going on? Um, this year I was attending um, the Etsy security conference in, uh, in France. Uh, it was quite recently in, in October. So I've heard uh, new insights on those uh, protocols 
which was uh, very interesting. So um, I can advise you to take a look at um, the NIST website for new updates on this. I've put psych in red because it's not usable any longer. And um, NIST also called for, uh, for new uh, post-quantum uh, signatures protocols in order to broaden pro a portfolio. I am uh, one of the members of the Etsy cybersecurity group. We are, um, yeah, our aim is not to develop the, the protocols itself. However, we are looking at the implementation value of the different uh, protocols. So um, our aim is to establish uh, guidelines and technical specification on uh, how to implement uh, different pro protocols. And yeah, some of the protocols have, um, for example, uh, Falcon. It was mentioned yesterday from the top of my head. It ha has a quite large uh, key size. So for some organizations, it's useful to implement. For other organizations, it's, it's not. So it's a business, business uh, decision. And as a supervisory body, we um, support uh, business decisions and we don't want to say, okay, uh, don't use Falcon because it has a very long key size and it's not attainable. So we will uh, keep it uh, technically neutral. We are busy with current work items and there are new work items on the roadmap at the Etsy uh, working group. You can take a look at uh, the website of Etsy itself. Um, I've put in uh, several uh, interesting um, uh, website links within this presentation. So it will guide you through the necessary information. What is the course of action? Um, from the inspector's view, the view of the quantum program in general. Um, we have seen some nice work already about migration steps to take. And this is only one of the migration books in place. It's uh, the ANISA PQG initiatives. Um, so I've put in a link and it's very useful to take a look at this. Initiatives of the uh, quantum program itself. So I already mentioned that we uh, started our program several years ago. And actually it started with a quite broad research question. What is uh, quantum technology? So we, uh, in a small group of uh, quantum enthusiasts, saw different uh, perspective on, on, on quantum. It was called, and is still called, a disruptive technology, um, urgency. Uh, that kind of uh, terminology was, uh, was present in, in scientific literature. So there was an urgency for us to get a grip on what's going on in the field. So uh, we started with a research on uh, what, what is quantum and its different working fields. And post-quantum cryptography of quant or quantum-safe cryptography is just one of those fields. Uh, recently, we uh, published a research paper together with Dialogic and Teno on uh, quantum sensors and how we regard, uh, how we see how it will develop in the near future and the near future um, between now and five years. Um, yeah, what we also did is building a quantum radar. So the different steps of the technology, the different fields of technology and how it will evolve. And uh, we put quantum uh, technology in our trend radar. Um, yeah,
yeah, we are sharing our knowledge with, with stakeholders, with uh, uh, TSPs itself. And it's nice to see and to hear that the trust service providers are also taking a step. And uh, for example, yesterday I've heard from one of the TSPs that they are that they are thinking about um, how to move forward with uh, post quantum cryptography, and they have put it in their uh, risk assessment. And it's good to hold a uh, communication about this subject. Um, uh, nicely to say, uh, we also built a uh, quantum board game. And uh, if you are interested, uh, you can uh, give me a sign. And uh, it's quite a nice game. And so uh, give me a sign if you are interested. Those are the useful websites I refer to. And are there any questions? Do we have any questions in the room? Oh. I'm going to be unsafe and throw it up to you. See, that's where you're supposed to yell my eye. <laughs> so you have a kind of a unique role in uh, being part of the Dutch authority for monitoring digital infrastructure. You're working with larger governing boards like Etsy. Yeah. Um, what's your estimation that we'll see other like non-regulatory boards for example, the common criteria certification community adopt new protection profiles that will be quantum ready. You know, for trust service providers, you want to do things mm -hmm. for qualified electronic signature. One of the main requirements is, hey, we're using common criteria certified equipment and manufacturer like NXP, the HSM manufacturers, any PKI authority, they're all in this kind of arms race to keep certifying their solutions. Mm -hmm. In your estimation, how far away do you think the first protection profiles to be PQC ready or PQC mm. safe or coming? Okay, uh, PQC ready. Um, okay, let's start with uh, standardization efforts. Um, they are taking place. And uh, for example, uh, everyone here heard already about uh, the NIST challenge. Uh, standardization uh, will be in place uh, next year already. However, there are also other standardization uh, efforts uh, nowadays. And we are also trying to monitor and follow their developments. And sometimes it's very hard to, to get a grip on how it will proceed. So for us, it may also be a, um, um, a challenge to uphold um, this information and to keep track on everything what's what's going on and in a, in a certain way uh, in, in a positive uh, sense um, a lot of institutions are, are quite busy but for us as an authority it's also a challenge to, to gather uh, and to collect all information available so we are in contact with other ministries in order to um, to build a roadmap and uh, to get grip on the situation. So giving you a year, a date is, is very hard. <laughs> so quick uh, question from online and, and uh, I'll actually uh, bring two questions together here. Uh, people online seem to be very interested in the game. Just, just <laughs> kind of, uh, very good to hear. Just a note. Um, people want to know sort of uh, how did you go about developing a game? Uh, for mm -hmm. post quantum and uh, and uh, follow up to that is uh, is what is the game? Uh, can you give us a bit more description of what <laughs> it entails? <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I've developed and set up uh, the game with with my quantum colleagues within uh, the Dutch uh, authority, and um, we tried to give uh, something fun in this whole field of of, of quantum it's it's uh, quite a serious field i already mentioned uh, some um, um terminology like disruptive urgency and and so on so the game um is here to to provide a a fun 
uh, elements within the whole uh, scene. So in the second part of the question just, is... Just give us a little bit about how you play the game. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a, it's, a, it's a board game, so you will sit together with uh, five or more persons, and every uh, person uh, uh, around the table will get a role, uh, like the CISO or the citizen, and you can spend wisely, hopefully, your uh, budget or your money on several items of, of quantum. So that's, that's in a nutshell how it works. So awesome. That sounds, uh, sounds kind of <laughs> like fun. Uh, yeah, we, we, ironically enough, and, and I love to see these initiatives that take these problems that we're all sort of dealing with and, and turns them into something fun. We've done comic books on PKI problems and things like that and board games because it makes it relatable to the people who are not in this room who are interested but don't necessarily follow this day in, day out and live and breathe it. So I, I love the initiative and the idea to help sort of simplify and make fun yeah. some, of these, uh, uh. some of these types of uh, problems. So with that, Lizzie, I wanted to thank you very much. And uh, we appreciate you. your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.